It's almost the end of Orktober, and you didn't think I was gonna miss it when I'm building an orc army, did you? Well, I'm not, and as voted on by my patrons, this month I'm gonna be painting Mazgrag, no, Mazrog Scragbad, because I can't say his name correctly, even though he's the HQ for my new list. I'm really excited to paint this guy. GW delayed him. I thought he was gonna be out last month, but he wasn't. So this is a long overdue painting tutorial. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. So it's like a week earlier and I have the bad boy built up. Look at him, he's so cool. Now he's got a few pieces not attached yet and I'm actually not going to be painting him fully assembled like this. I just kind of want to see how he actually fit together. But what I'm going to do is this piece is going to be remaining separate. So it's going to be his torso. Um, this goes on his back. It's also remaining separate just to make sure that I can paint the backside of him a lot easier because otherwise I think it would be like kind of a pain to get to that. And then I'm actually going to be taking off his legs as well from the body of the squig. That way, when I actually get to painting the squig's flesh, which is what I will be working on first, it's gonna go a lot faster. There's gonna be less in my way. Um, and then once we've got that done, then I'll attach the legs, put this little gun piece on as well, and we can finish up the squig in that portion. And then we'll move on to the top. It's gonna go pretty swimmingly, I hope, but let's go ahead and get into it. I've got all of my pieces now primed up using some rake bone. I have a little bit of touch up to do under like the belly of the squig and everything where my spray prime didn't quite fully hit, but I'm not super worried about that. And I'm actually gonna do the inside of his mouth a little bit more just to make sure I get some good coverage in there for my contrast paint. But going forward, I'm ready to start on actually painting this guy up. I have a color scheme in mind. We're gonna start with the squig itself and I'm definitely going for the classic white squig look. I want him to look like a great white shark and I have a cool idea of how to do that. So let's go ahead and get into it. Like I said, I want Big Champa to look like a great white shark. And to me, that means a lot of blue grays and white blues, which I have a very specific plan in mind. So starting with the base coat, we're gonna start with some Ulthwan Gray. I'm gonna use a little bit of a larger brush than I normally would just because the surface area on this model is a lot larger and this is gonna help me get it done faster. But we're gonna put this color on, making sure to cover up all of that warmer Wraithbone color tone beneath. Once that's done, we're going to go ahead and apply a wash using Drakenhof Nightshade. The idea behind this wash is not so much to have this be the finished look of it, but just to deepen the recesses and all those wonderful folds that Champa has in his flesh. Also wanting to highlight all of his scars and like imperfections because he's battle scarred. He's been through a lot of damage and I wanna really emphasize those war wounds. So once that's done and it's had plenty of time to dry, I now really wanna start making him look a little bit more like a great white. And in my experience, great whites tend to have a little bit of a darker back and then their bellies tend to be the lighter color tone. So I'm gonna mimic that on Champa. And for that, we're going to use Stormfang. This is a nice darker blue gray color tone that you might recognize for the Space Wolves. And I really like the effect this has on his backside. We're gonna put this primarily on the back and then wrapping it very subtly onto his sides. Once we're done with that, we're going to move on to Ulthwan Gray one more time, blending this in with the excess paint of Stormfang that's left on my dry brush bristles to make a even paler bluish gray. We're going to apply this on the lower half of the model to sort of blend our colors together, brighten him back up a little bit. I really love the effect of this. It's going so well. I have one last thing that I wanna to do to the skin, however, actually two things. I want to darken the fins on the top one more time with dark or Drakenhof Knife Shade, that deep blue color tone that we used as the shade earlier, just because they aren't quite as dark as I want them to be. And I think this helps add a little bit of variety. And then the last thing that I need to do on his flesh is use Apothecary White. This is going to be thinned really heavily with contrast medium so that it's really just a light glaze. And this is gonna help blend all of my color tones together. It's gonna to add this little bit of a chalky white to the model, which I actually think works perfectly for the great white flesh. And I'm really pleased with how he's turning out so far. But let's not forget about Mazgrog himself because we need to take care of his flesh as well. And 
Some of you may be very familiar with this color scheme because I use it on almost all of my orcs, but for those of you that are new, let me run through my orc flesh recipe real quick with you. First, we're gonna start with a bit of Plague Bearer's flesh, a really lovely warm green color tone. I love putting this on as my base coat and then following it up with a wash using BL Tan Green, which creates a wonderful apple green coloring that I absolutely adore, but I also get this really nice deeper blue green in the recesses, showing off all those lovely muscles that he's got. It ends up looking really nice, but I'm gonna push it a little bit further by using a bit of Uriel Yellow as a dry brush to add a little bit of additional highlights. Now, one of the reasons I like this recipe so much is because if I accidentally push the Uriel Yellow a little too far, I can go back with either the BL Tan Green or the Plague Bearer's Flesh, knock that yellow back and still have a lovely color tone, which I had to do on his shoulder and you can't even tell. It's awesome, I absolutely love this. Now, let's keep going. Ah, look at him, he's so good. Okay, so I just finished the cleanup stage on basically tidying up everything where all my dry brushing, I got colors where I didn't want them to. I am so happy with how the skin has turned out, both on him and on my orc, because I have both of their flesh tones done, which means that now I can just move on to the metallics and all of the leathers and everything, which I actually don't expect to take me that long. I'm going to, I think, do the metallics first, just to get all of the big portions done on here. I don't know, I haven't decided actually. The leathers might be a better option because I do need to attach the legs still. These are the only things that I haven't actually glued down or reattached to the model, but I think getting maybe the leathers done first so that I can get that done, then attach these, wrap up any leathers, because these obviously need a little bit of leather color tone as well, and then I can probably do the metals. And that actually should be relatively quick. So I'm feeling really good about this, despite how like big of a model he was. And I was kind of worried at the beginning, but he's turning out great. I'm super excited. Let's get painting. So I decided to work on the leathers next. I thought that was the best plan. And we're gonna keep it relatively simple because there isn't actually that much leather tones on either of these models. We're gonna first start with a bit of snake bite leather on the saddle, the strap that holds the saddle to Big Champa, as well as any of the straps on Mozgrog. Then to add a little bit of variety, I'm gonna pull out my favorite leather tone that Contrast Paint makes, Dark Oath Flesh, and apply this to the saddlebag as well as to the padding that Mazgrag has beneath the claw that is attached to his forearm. Because it's not actually like part of him, it's just attached as like a, an actual weapon. So he's got a little padding there, which I thought was a really nice, cute little touch. And we're gonna have those two color tones there. Then once those colors are done, I'm actually gonna go ahead and take care of all of the Basilicanum gray portions, which is covering anything that is mechanical or the weapons, anything like that. We're going to really not worry too much if this color is put down in a way that is a little bit uneven, for example, because it really doesn't matter. I want actually a little bit of unevenness with it because it actually makes the metal look, I think, a bit more natural. You don't really often see metal tones being like a really smooth finish, especially when they're ramshackled together because they're orcs and they're just grabbing bits and pieces from everywhere. So if it's a little uneven, I'm not super worried. Plus, we're gonna actually be doing a lot of glazing and adding a wash to it, which will help blend everything together and make it look fantastic. So like I said, this is gonna go on his arm, um, the mechanical one that Mazgrog has is gonna go on Champa's mechanical leg. It's gonna go on the exhaust that Champa has, which I don't quite understand how that works. I'm assuming he might have a mechanical lung as well. Maybe he's like a chain smoker or something. That's how he just like pumps it all out. I have no idea, but I really like that little aspect Big of Mac it. Big Mac makes Squig go faster. Oh my God, you're absolutely right. Of course, why didn't I think of that? That's absolutely what's going on. Oh my God, I wonder how fast he runs actually. Ooh, we should test that. I've attached his legs, as you can probably see. So I've finished up the majority of the leathers on the body of the squig, and I'm pretty satisfied with it. So I wanted to go ahead and get the legs attached because I figured painting them would actually be a little bit easier once they were actually on the model, rather than trying to do it separately and then attaching it and possibly rubbing off my paint. So I'm pretty happy with how the connection went. Um, it actually went together pretty seamlessly, which I was glad for. I did dry fit it um, prior to like actually even starting painting and everything, but I was still slightly worried because I always get nervous whenever I'm gluing a model together mid paint session. But what I think I'm actually gonna work on next is the mouth because that is a little bit more of a recessed area. Um, I wanna get that done before I do any of the teeth and I don't wanna risk like 
any further touch up that needs to happen. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take care of that now. Then I'll probably finish the pants and then we'll finish working on all of the like details and everything, all, all of the metallic pieces that we've already painted up. I'm really happy with how this is coming out. Let's keep going. Hello, Imperial Citizen. This is your regular reminder to subscribe to the channel and hit the Emperor's bell for notifications. And if you're feeling particularly devout, you can join my Patreon where you'll get exclusive unboxings, behind the scenes content, and more. Now, let's go ahead and get back to the video. It's time to paint up his fleshy gubbins with a little bit of Volpus pink because I really wanted the inside of Champa's mouth to have a little bit of a red tone, but not actually explicitly look bloody, which you could absolutely do if you wanted to, but I really didn't want that look. I wanted it to be a little bit more pinky, a little bit more of a natural gum coloring. And it ends up working really well as I glaze it onto his lips a little bit. And I love the sort of purplish tone that that creates because of the blue undercolor of his flesh tone. So it's just, it overall works really well. I'm very happy with how his mouth turned out, which I was very worried because it's such a tight little space. I wasn't sure I was going to be able to get in there super easily. Let's go ahead and work on Maz Grala's pants. I went ahead and used a little bit of Basilican Gray off screen to go ahead and just touch up any of the little embellishments that he has attached to his pants. But I wanted to show you guys me putting down the snake bite leather, which I put on his boots because that's what I always do for my orcs. And then I wanted to use Agros Dune on his pants, which again, is something that I always do on my orcs. This is one of those little touches that I like to do to make the army feel a bit more cohesive, even though I try to add a bit more variety in their flesh tones, in what they do for their shirts, and how they arrange their weapons and how they color their weapons and everything. But this helps unify it very subtly and create basically cohesion, which I really like. We're down to the details and we've got a couple of colors to go over. So let's go through the list. We're gonna start with Black Templar. This is going to be for that thick cable that Champa has attached to his leg, as well as to accent some details on his leg of those metallic bits, just to give a little bit more variety so that the Basilicanum Gray doesn't look too homogenous and everything. Cause right now it's blending together a little bit too much. Then we're going to move on to some Skeleton Horde, which I'll be thinning down with some contrast medium because I want this to be very, very pale. This is going to be going primarily on the bones that are on the banner that Mazgrog will have on his back later, as well as on the toes of Champa. Then for Champa's teeth, I actually decided to go with Reichland's Flesh Shade, thinned down additionally with some contrast paint because I just didn't think that the more yellow color tone of Skeleton Horde would work against all of that blue flesh but the Reichlin's having a little bit more of a red tone to it, I think complements with his gums really nicely. And I really like the look of this. I'll probably be doing this a little bit more in the future for an alternate bone color tone. After that, we're going to do a little bit of detail glazing work on the metallics, starting with Blood Angel's Red. This is going to be first and foremost for Champa's eye, as well as Mazgrog's mechanical eye. But I also want to use it as a glaze on the exhaust, on Champa's leg, as well as a couple other key locations on the model, just to add a bit more color and flavor to the sculpt. Then we're going to move on to using a bit of ultramarine blue and militarum green, both colors of which I've chosen for my snake bite color scheme. I've done this on a lot of my orcs and I wanted to add that color in here because he's the leader of this army. So we're going to focus the blue and green primarily on the banner as well as Mazgrog's arm because he's got a couple of like neat little symbols and stuff on there. There's one that looks like a Squigasaurus, there's a bone, there's something that looks like a tail and everything. So I alternate between these colors to add a little bit more variety in as well. The last thing that we need to do detail wise is go ahead and pull out some white scars. And we're gonna apply this to that lovely little drool that's hanging down for Chompa's teeth because right now it's blending in a little bit too much with his just normal flesh color because I haven't really done anything else to it. So we're gonna thin the white scars down with a little bit of water and just glaze that on just to make it a little bit more opaque white so it stands out. The details are done. And the last thing that I need to do is apply a wash using Agrath's Earth Shade. Now, this doesn't quite go exactly how I wanted it to. It ends up being a little bit more splotchy than I really intended. And I think that's just because I didn't really anticipate washing that large of a model all at once. It just didn't quite go how I wanted. So once the Agras Earthshade has dried thoroughly, I'm gonna go ahead and glaze on another layer of Apothecary White. This helps blend that splotchiness down and actually make it look more like a dust covering, which I think is going to go great with what I end up doing with the groundwork for my orcs because, well, I mean, you've seen what they're on base wise, but for this guy, we have to do something a little bit different. Rawr! All right, 
So he himself is done. In fact, he's even been sprayed so that I can handle him without concerns. And I'm really actually very happy with how he turned out, even though I did have a little bit of concern with some of the wash that I did, but I actually think I cleaned it up pretty well. And I like how gritty he actually turned out. I feel like it's gonna fit really well with what I've been doing on my orc so far. I'm just, I'm really pleased. But as you might notice, we haven't done anything with his base. So that's what we're going to work on next. So I'm gonna take him off of this and then we're gonna think about what to do because you see the rest of my orc army is on these pre-made bases by Gamers Grass, which are lovely. And I am really sad that I can't use them on Mazgrav because they don't actually make it in his size. So what I'm going to do instead is I pulled out a couple of bits that I have just laying around that are rocks. I'm gonna put that onto his main base. And then around that, I'm going to try to recreate what I've done on my orc terrain that you may have seen me build on another video, because this will help blend it into the army because I've already designed this to blend with these gamer grass faces. So if I mimic this, I figure I can make Mozgrog look like he blends as well. How am I going to do that? Well, after I get these rocks laid down and thankfully I know where he's going to be standing so I can kind of position them however I want. I'm then going to lay down some texture paint, specifically Sterling mud. I'm gonna make sure that this is kind of chunky because I want the textures on this paint to really be visible, especially because I'm going to be going back over them with some dry brushes after they're fully dried. Once the paint has had a plenty of time to dry, I'm going to start with a dry brush of Hobgrot Hide, which is actually what I used on my base as well. And then I'm gonna follow that up with an even lighter dry brush using Tyrant Skull. Once that's done, I'm going to add a bunch of tufts that will blend in with what Gamers Grass already uses on their urban bases that I've been using so that it all blends together. And I'm really excited for it. I think it's gonna look great. So let's go ahead, get to it, and then we can take a look at the final model. New segment, Angela's first reaction. Whoa! I love how he turned out. Like the base I think is really what ultimately sells it for me because the paint job I'm super happy with, but the base, Looks freaking rad and I base. just- Base, 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 base. But I just finished rimming the base and it's just, it's come together. We're gonna look at him here like full screen and everything here in a second. I'll talk more about it, but I am hyped for this model. I can't wait to actually get him on the table and run him in my list. Look at him in all of his orky glory. I love how this model turned out. I mean, you might've already seen that from my first reaction, but legitimately, I'm super pleased with how this turned out, especially considering I feel like I kind of borked up my wash a little bit, but I salvaged it. He looks amazing. I'm especially pleased with how the base has come out because it just, I don't know, having a really nice looking base really just makes a model come together. And I think he's gonna blend super well with the rest of the army, despite the fact that I don't have an exactly matching base to the rest of the basically list, because everybody else is gonna have those gamer grass bases. But he turned out spectacularly, and I just, I can't get over it. I'm really, really pleased. I do kind of want to paint Thraka. Um, I also want to paint more squigs. Holy cow, do I want to paint so many more squigs. Thankfully, my list does have a bunch of writers in it who are all on squigs. So I'm going to have a lot of fun building those up and getting them painted. None of them are going to be a great white like Champa is, but they're going to have some fun colors. I think I'm going to play around with that a little bit more because I really enjoyed this. Let me know what you guys thought down below. I wanted to give an extra special thank you to my patrons for voting on Mazgrog to be painted this month. I really enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoyed watching it and everything. I have been Angela. You've been watching Hobby Night, and I will see you guys next week. Bye. So wait, you're saying you paint your Warhammer armies with the same color uniforms? Yes, I know, it's bl mind blowing. That is such a radical concept in this hobby. I mean, with orcs and some of the ones where you can experiment more, maybe it is.